Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another Friday edition live stream. Um, today, my name is Lev, first of all, and I have our good friend Don, if uh, you noticed him on previous streams. <laughs> Happy Friday, everyone. Um, we're going to be doing a webinar on uh, marketing your laser business, but more specifically, video marketing uh, your laser business. So if you're just joining us, uh, leave us a comment, say hello, tell us where you're from. Oh, Mr. Tomas from Belgium, our long, long standing. Good to see uh, you. Actually, could catch Tomas on our live stream with Don on the laser challenge. That's true. Well, we got Jovan from Botswana, all our friends from around the world. Thank you so much for joining us. This is very exciting stuff. Uh, I wonder. Perfect. Don, how are you doing this morning? I mean, pretty good. 34 years old, and I'm still not used to the winters in Canada. You would think that eventually I would get, like, it would, it would just become second nature. But every year, I sort of, <laughs> it takes me by surprise. Uh, overall, though, like, really good. I've been excited for this webinar, actually, for a little while. I think this is a way that, um, and, you know, I really want to encourage you to sort of follow up on what Lev was saying. I mean, certainly, uh, oh, welcome from well, uh, well knife, Yellow Knife from Bangladesh again. Um, so happy to have you all with us. Uh, I really encourage you to ask questions. This is an area that, um, I mean, look, for my part, I host a lot of uh, streams for Trotech where I am sort of the straight man in a lot of ways. Like I, I'm sitting underneath the laser design challenge and some of that, you know, certainly I'm, I'm trying to have fun with the very talented designers like Tomas who join us. Uh, but part of it is that like, it's a huge learning opportunity for me. Uh, and this morning's stream I've been really excited for because this is an area that Lev and I are, are actually quite knowledgeable about in general. Um, what we do at Trotech is by no means the end all and, and be all. It's not the only one way to do this, but we wanted to present to you guys something that we know works and has worked for us. And so we really encourage you to ask a lot of questions because this is a morning where I feel like we could give you some really great uh, information. And I, I hope you're, you know, definitely feel free to interrupt us at any time. Ask questions in the chat. You know, we're here to help you more than anything. So, you know, don't feel like these are the empirical rules on how to do it, but uh, by all means, you know, this is something that has worked for us and, and I hope it can be helpful for you. Yeah, we wanted to, I guess, do something like uh, behind the scenes of our video marketing. I mean, you guys obviously, hopefully you've seen our YouTube <laughs> videos that we post there. Um, we kind of said, well, you know, a lot of people, a lot of our customers, laser users, uh, small businesses, medium-sized businesses, you know, they, they do a lot of social media stuff. They do their own kind of marketing. Maybe there's something we could do to help uh, in their video marketing efforts. Uh, I think uh, it's definitely intimidating if you're looking at this kind of video sphere, like how do I even get into videos? I have no idea and nothing to do with, like I don't know anything about videos. How do I get into videos? Um, and we're here to show you it's really not that uh, scary or complicated. So just a couple of things that we're gonna cover. Um, uh, in our presentation. And I'll actually give you guys a quick tutorial on Sony Vegas. Uh, that's our that's editing kind of, program. Yeah, the video editing program that we use. Um, but there's like the industry standard, I think, is uh, Adobe Premiere. But yeah. for me, I think for, for new users, Adobe Premiere could be a lot more intimidating uh, than something like Sony Vegas. I mean, there's obviously like Window Movie Maker in um, on the PC, and then there's iMovie and stuff on the Mac. Exactly. That's, that's the more easier ones to, to do video. Mm -hmm. So again, it's it's more behind the scenes. We'll show you how we market our videos, how we make the videos, uh, and hopefully you guys can make your own. So I, I guess a quick uh, a couple of stats uh, in terms of video marketing. So videos are four times as many customers would rather watch a video than to read about a product. Think about you know, if you're searching for something, if you're searching for a product, if you're searching for even a service, like how do you find that information? You obviously would put it on Google or probably YouTube and look for video. When was the last time you've read a full article about a product that you're you're looking at? It's usually most uh, mostly for for video. And 71% of uh, consumers who viewed video uh, end up making a purchase. There's there's some stats for you guys as well from score.org. Um, in terms of videos, 96% of videos and emails increase the click-through rate by 96%. Sorry, 90, it increases by 96%. So um, if you guys don't know what click-through rate is, it's basically the amount of clicks uh, your email would get uh, divided by the, the impressions. So if 100 people would view the email, 
50 people click, your your click through rate is 50. percent So yeah, if you guys see get any of our pesky emails uh, in your email box, I think John 95 percent you would say are have videos in them. Yeah, uh, as many videos. as many as we possibly can. I mean, this obviously supposes that you're doing an email marketing or like a, a newsletter, some form of outreach to your customers already. Um, but certainly, you know, take it from us. Obviously, that's we know that that's enough work as it is. Certainly, you want to do everything you can to inc increase that uh, interactive element with your emails. Uh, and and as I was saying, a video is going to be one of those things that makes it that much more tempting to sort of click through on your emails. People know that they're not going to be taken to a you know a sales page or or something like that. It's I mean, we'll get into why thumbnails and things like that are really uh, important later on down the line. But just sort of as a general practice. Uh, I would say, yeah, 95% of our emails have videos specifically for this reason, because we want to give you guys something that's meaningful, but also that, you know, feels exciting and, and good to follow. Yeah, we, we essentially try not to put as little text in our emails as possible and focus yes. more on the videos, just have a quick description. Because, I mean, you want to differentiate yourself from like the, I don't know, tens or hundreds of emails you get throughout the day or a week. So, um Videos are extremely important for, for email campaigns. I mean, if you guys don't have any email campaigns, if you're just starting out your, your engraving business, uh, my biggest recommendation is start building out an email list. So every customer that you have, ask them if they can join uh, your, your email list and send them promotions. Um, the, the key thing that I guess I want everyone to, to get out of this is that a video is a product, a product that you do to market um, so the way we view it is we build a video and then we market it through the different channels that we use. So mm -hmm. YouTube, social media, email campaigns, whatever. But the essential product is that video based on the lasering that you're doing. So if you're engraving a tumbler, for example, with a, you know, a special kind of engraving, that video is the core that you can then push out to your, uh, to your customers, potential customers and so on. Right. And I think this slide goes a long way towards uh, exactly what you're saying, Lev, which is to say that like, if you make a, a video for your business, um, you're not relegated to just putting it on YouTube and hoping it gains traction. You can use a video in so many different ways. It becomes a really flexible key to a lot of different things. You can use the same video on your YouTube channel, your Instagram page, your Twitter. Uh, I mean, your email marketing, uh, your Google, you know, uh, location results, that sort of thing. Like you can leverage that video in a lot of different marketing channels. Uh, you know, without necessarily having to do a, a special message for each one, you know, you can sort of uh, address your customers separately across each one if you so choose. Yeah, and I, I just want to bring Mike's comment there. I mean, yeah. you know, he's not talking about time, but videos definitely they take more time than than usual. But you don't have to yeah. spend all day creating a video. Like we try to make a video from start to finish in let's say in one day from from yeah. design to production to editing. We don't have time to to spend more than, than that. That's how we kind of get to one video per week. Yep. Uh, another good stat here is uh, uh, videos also boost SEO. Videos are 50 times more likely to get on organic page ranks in Google than plain text results. So uh, organic page rank is like if you search on Google, that first kind of page that you see all the lists of, uh, of links and websites. Mm -hmm. uh, now Google is putting more emphasis on videos. A lot of the times if it's a popular keyword search, you'll see videos right on the page, right uh, on the page results, uh, search engine page results. Let's go. Yep. Uh, so if you're a small business, don't think that, oh, you know, video production is only for, for big businesses. I don't have the budget for it. Yeah. Uh, you can see by, by this, that a majority of uh, video producers are small businesses, especially now there's a huge trend in the last five to 10 years. Uh, for what we call influencers or people with a huge following and all they create is content, not so much the products themselves, but the content based on those pro uh, products. So, I mean, what kind of videos? I mean, if you're a laser uh, laser business, one of our clients, uh, depending on what, the type of products that you're making, the type of service that you're, you're doing, explainers, product demos, uh, how-tos, testimonials, this is the common thing, and we'll show you what uh, what we do uh, in the type of categories that we do them. Um, the videos less than 90 seconds keep 53% 50, of their viewers. So try to keep the videos from one to, to three minutes, uh, especially if you're trying to promote a certain product or, or business or service. 
So I guess we could talk about the tools you'll need. And this is kind of what we use, basically. We do have a separate DSLR camera. So I, I guess let me go uh, one, one step at a time here. So the first thing you obviously need besides a, a good laptop or a, a good computer that would hold the video software is the video software. So we use Sony Vegas. Uh, the movie studio version is about 86 bucks, but we use the Pro, which I think it has, I think it's in the $500 range, but that's, you know, we don't even use most of the stuff that we can with Sony Vegas. So that's what I'm saying. There's a lot more to it than than you need. It's just like a, just like Photoshop or, or, or Illustrator, you know, you might be using 30% of what the actual full capabilities of Photoshop yeah. are. So you don't I want- Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, sorry. I was just going to say, I would add here too. Uh, I just really want to stress exactly what Lev is saying that uh, these are the tools specifically that we use. If you wanted to get the exact same result that, that, you know, in terms of, um, you know, polish and, and finish quality and, uh, you know, as we have on our videos, we could show you exactly how to do it with these tools, but by no means again, you know, is this, th there are plenty of successful YouTube channels that use, you know, Microsoft movie studio kind of thing. Like you, <laughs> You, yeah. you certainly don't uh, need to have these things, but, uh, you know, again, we wanted to speak to you really plainly about, you know, what has worked for us. So, you know, don't feel like you have to have a DSLR by any means, you know, like uh, you can use an, an iPhone and they have an incredible quality of camera. Um, but, you know, what we're going to be speaking to this morning is just what we use specifically. So it helps us to sort of, uh, you know, convey to you specifically our experiences on yeah. yeah, and I mean, like Don said, a lot of a lot of the cell phones now, the iPhones, they have really good cameras. They, yeah. you guys can get apps uh, on these phones to edit these videos. Yep. I personally never use them because I I always feel like it, it'll be tough to edit a video on your phone. So I do use a laptop, but again, it's it's people's preferences. This is, I, I guess, you can call it a, a, a little bit higher in terms of the professional grade that you want. It's not a professional commercial grade video by any means, but it's something a little bit better for than, than a cell phone footage video. Not to say anything bad about cell phone videos, like I said, they're very good qualities now for cell phones. So mm -hmm. uh, in terms of cameras, I mean, we have the Sony, uh, sorry, we have the Canon uh, 70D DSLR that we use for a lot of the videos, but if you're uh, a beginner, if you're starting out, my recommendation is the Sony A6000. Uh, it's around 800, 800 bucks Canadian, there is newer versions of the A6000. The A6000 is a mirrorless camera. I'm not a camera guy, so I'm not going to go into the science behind mirrorless cameras versus, you know, the the, the traditional. But what I found with the Sony A6000 is that um, if you guys look at our our streams where we show the laser, like like our Rayjet challenge, I can go into it and show you. Um, with this um, Elgato Cam Link that's about 170 bucks, you can stream HD with this camera directly onto your laptop. It's like plug and play, very, very easy thing. Uh, Nicole, hi, thanks for joining us. Uh, I use the app in InShot to edit videos. If I use my phone, it's affordable, 10 bucks a year. That's actually good. So I have, yeah. a, I have a friend who runs a, a YouTube channel and, and she uses this exact same app and, and swears by it. Certainly to Lev's point, it, it is, uh, you know, there's a learning curve, you know, to getting used to like trimming pieces of footage <laughs> uh, on your phone. But, uh, but uh, I mean, it definitely works, right? Um, yeah, Pinnacle Studios, uh, certainly. Um, I think I've heard of Pinnacle for, I've used it a long time ago. I, and I'm glad Mike mentions that too, uh, because screen capturing is another thing that, uh, you know, like the software we're using right now to be able to stream to you is not particularly, uh, it's called StreamYard. It's not particularly expensive uh, per month or per year, but it does everything that we need it to do uh, at the at the quality level that we need it to do it. And it gives us beautiful screen capturing, that sort of thing. I mean, live streaming uh, isn't something we're gonna necessarily get into today very much, but it's another sort of form of, of video that you can consider if it makes sense for, you know, yeah, you for, your process. For la laser engravers, I mean, I'm not quite sure for live streaming, like a software like this, like StreamYard, where you can have like a town hall. I mean, it depends if you're maybe a school or, or a makerspace or a fab lab that you, mm -hmm. you need that kind of community live approach, this, this would be good. But I mean, again, if we're talking, you know, small, medium-sized laser businesses, this is where you start. You know, yeah. you obviously want a tripod. Uh, you want to yes. turn out the whole videos in your hands. We do that too sometimes. Um, that <laughs> microphone, uh, the Sony, that's actually one of the easiest wireless microphones to set up. Yep. Uh, it actually plugs directly to the Sony A6000 and it's like plug and play. There's one battery in that receiver. Uh, the sound quality is really good. So you can, 
you can stand the far away, the the sound quality is really good. In terms of just plug and play, uh, put something together, this is our recommendation. Uh, like I mentioned, the Elgato link, uh, that's for live streaming. So if you're yep. looking to do something live streaming with an HD camera, like a, like a mirrorless Sony A6000, uh, that's the recommendation. Uh, finally, optional is the GoPro. You guys have seen our videos where it's kind of, um, I don't have it, I, I can find it, but we put the GoPro on the suction cup and yep. we put it to, to the back, to the inside of the laser on the lid, and then we kind of close it. It has these really cool action shots. Uh, so a GoPro with a suction mount, and I just realized I didn't put the pricing of the GoPro, but it's about uh, 300 bucks. I was going to say, for the GoPro itself. <laughs> I want to go to your GoPro guy, because holy moly. <laughs> Over 50 bucks, exactly. Yeah, hey, John, how's it going? Um, Thanks for joining us. One thing I will say just really, really quickly yeah. uh, regarding the GoPro, uh, and this is something that has happened to me, it's happened to Miguel, it's happened to Lev. I think uh, the first few times that you are mounting your GoPro inside of your laser, if you choose to go this route, just like, you know, drive your laser head around your job prior to starting the video so that your laser head doesn't crash into your GoPro uh, whilst you're filming. Uh, I wanted to mention it just because, again, it's happened to me, uh, it's happened to a lot of us, and it is very, very scary. <laughs> so, you know, with a lot of this stuff, just, uh, you know, be careful, certainly. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, actually. So I'll, I'll give you guys an example. Let's bring it here to, to the screen. So this is one project that we did, and you can see the GoPro shot in right here so that's the gopro shot now if you have like let's say if you're doing a massive sign and you want to record a video that bar especially if you're engraving from top to bottom like that's going to hit the gopro if especially yeah. the gopro camera is somewhere around here so if you're doing a full job like that obviously pause it uh pause the laser when it's about halfway halfway there like take the gopro out and then finish the job so yeah. you don't want to hit the, the laser with and gopro to our point from earlier, uh, I mean, the, the cutting and engraving of this sign may have been, you know, 15 minutes or 10 minutes or something, but they, like that's all of the footage that we want to use from the GoPro there. Like 90 seconds to maybe three minutes, as I've said, is an ideal amount of time for a really quick video. Uh, you know, you don't necessarily need to show the entire process of the engraving. Uh, you saw just a few seconds of it there and you understand, you know, everything about what it is and what's happening. We only show you two of the four colors because, again, you know, it would be redundant to maybe show you all four being done. Um, yeah, that's a great point, actually. If you, like once you finish the the editing process, just all, always watch the entire video from start to finish and yes. just see where it's lagging, where it's too boring, where it's like, oh my god, this is like this is a little too long. I need to shorten it. Remember, quick videos, one to three minutes, uh, like featuring your products, what the services that you guys are doing. Yeah, it doesn't need to be a long video. So. These capture shots, like Don mentioned, I mean, yeah. you could literally count the seconds. It's about 10, I don't know, 10, 20 seconds of, of footage. If and, even that, yeah. And that's it. So you don't have to, like, you don't have to keep the GoPro the, the entire time you're doing the cutting, which we yeah. don't. As Clarity above all, right? Clarity first and foremost, and then you can worry about cleverness, um, you know, secondary to that. As long as your message is clear, that's more important by and large. <clears throat> Excuse me. I mean, think about how long uh, we were talking about email interactions earlier. Think about how long you look at any individual sales email you get. I mean, maybe a few seconds, usually maybe 30 seconds at most before you've decided like, yes or no, I'm going to interact with this. So uh, clarity, 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 first and foremost, and then um, cleverness, you know, so, uh, sort of um, second to that. Um, you know, exactly. And uh, we might go back to these examples at the end if we have time, mm -hmm. but um, uh, I'll share the presentation link in the description of the video once we're done. Once we're done the live stream, uh, but just I guess to talk about the type of content you can make as as a laser user. Uh, let me bring back my screen here for uh, here for our, our YouTube channel. Uh, really quickly, I'm just gonna yeah. to answer this question here from Sharp. Um, so the the I might have it here with me. I could maybe grab it, but the the suction cup mount that we have has a pivoting head. Uh, it pivots, uh, you know, either left or right, and it pivots up and down um, in order that, you know, so when we have the door up, it can be facing straight downward, and then we swing the door downward, which brings it in line with the laser material. And then, uh, you know, when we go to close the lid and do it properly, we can bend the the arm up to keep the GoPro level with the material then on that, that same, uh, you know, it has a few axes on which it can sort of turn and, and make sure that it's uh, yeah, you know, always exactly the... 
if you're getting the GoPro, get the GoPro suction cup. I mean, uh, if you get the kind of the cheaper version, it's going to break after you know six months. The I mean, the GoPro suction cup it's more expensive, but it's more expensive for a reason. It's going to last you for a lot longer. Hundred percent. Yeah. So the, I mean, the type of content. Think about the type of business that you guys run. I mean, are you a woodworker? Are you a leather worker? You know, do you do DIY crafts, uh, signage, that sort of thing? If you can, like I know. I think after you get a thousand uh, subscribers on YouTube, you can kind of break again. I'm not sure, but I, I believe it's a thousand is the threshold. Uh, you can break down your um, your playlists this way. So it's all by categories, as you can see. And the categories that we kind of chose, uh, you're only limited to, I think, nine in, in your YouTube channel. So when somebody goes on your YouTube channel, they see like the top um, video that you have, your feature video. You can actually post separate playlists. Um, the playlist that we put is who we are, which is basically our customer testimonials. Uh, if you guys have customer testimonials, even if you're making uh, you know name signs, and a customer can have a quick video on their camera and send it to you, send you the video, I mean that goes a long way in mm -hmm. terms of you know building trust uh, in your community, in, in your business, in your brand. Um, the consumables is obviously the consumables that we sell at Trotech. So Ooh. we have videos uh, specifically dedicated to the consumables. Applications, I mean, we kind of started uh, this year with this with this new concept of um, business and beyond. It was actually created by uh, Miguel, our applications uh, specialist. And we, you know, we're always experimenting what works, what doesn't with, with the different kind of video concepts. So with business and beyond, I mean, we just launched this one. It's basically, you know, the 12, um, 12 products that you can do for, for law firms, basically. So applications, this is more towards you if you're a laser business, if you're engraving, you know, what types of products do you want to feature um, in your business? One, uh, one question I would ask you, Lev, just really quickly. Sure. Um, so I'm going to put you on the spot here. You're, you're starting a new laser business now. Lev is starting a new laser business. Uh, I know when you started with Trotech, one of the things that you really uh, you know, worked very hard on at the time was building out our YouTube channel. Um, because we, you know, when you started with Trotech, uh, you know, not, not that it's decreased in relevancy, I guess, at all, but that like, YouTube really was the principal um, you know, way to, to, to convey that online video marketing. If you were starting today, is that still the first step that you would take or would you focus on like an Instagram profile kind of first? Like what, what might be your first uh, place, you know, in terms of social medias or, or would you say they're kind of all equal? Well, here, that's a great question, actually. I mean, my only regret is that I didn't uh, promote on what, what we do now, what I didn't do five years ago. Uh, so when I started the YouTube channel, it was like, I did a little research and every YouTuber, successful YouTuber out there, successful business out there said, uh, it's about consistency. So mm -hmm. set a schedule, make a video every week, let's say. And that was the goal. So every week for the last six years, we try to release at least one video. That, that was kind of the, the goal. And that's how the, the channel grew and grew. Uh, first at very slow, but then, you know, you, you, got, you can't, you can't kind of look at, you know, three, four, five months down the line, and like, well, I'm not getting any views. You know, yeah. it's not really worth it. It's the long game. It's really. a snowball. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's the long game. So, I mean, this, you know, just put up our Instagram, uh, our Instagram account. So, a lot of these videos that we put, uh, we actually repost. So, the Mike video from, from last week. So, this is kind of what we didn't do six years ago, what we should have done now. So, every like I said, video is a product that we expand to all our channels. And I mm -hmm. think if we did that a few years back, uh, we probably would have had a, a bigger following than, than we're doing. So that would be, you know, my recommendation. But definitely do do the videos. Um, once you, at first it's awkward, like, you know, any design software, uh, it gets it gets to a point where you're comfortable with it and then you can do it and, and you can do it very quickly. Um, Especially now, nowadays, you know, there's not, I wouldn't even say there's such a big emphasis on websites as opposed to the content that you're, you're producing. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, not to interrupt you, forgive me, but I, <clears throat> I think Nicole, who, uh, who we brought up earlier in the chat is a great example of this, where uh, she has a, a tremendous, like a, a great 
uh, online presence. Uh, she's joined us on the, the Rage at Challenge a few times, kind of cool. Uh, but um, you know, her her focus, I, I would say, it's you know not unfair to say, is principally been Instagram, um, where you know, like uh, Thomas Enchantonneur, right? Um, uh, as he mentions, like uh, you know, yeah, that, that's trying a to question. stand out on YouTube now is is maybe a bit trickier than it was kind of once upon a time, sort of thing. Yeah, for somebody who's starting, Thomas, I think it's the same. It's it's going to take time. That's what you got to like. It doesn't that's, matter if if YouTube is filled with yeah, new regardless. Yeah, yeah, because like just to give you an example, I mean, I was looking through our our Instagram accounts on. I mean, just in Canada alone, there's tons and tons and tons of woodworkers on Instagram. Some of them have YouTube channels. Some of them don't. Some are more successful than others. The ones that I talk to. Uh, and I said, how did you build your, your channel? You know, somebody had uh, over 200,000 on their Instagram account. And um, so uh, I asked them and they said the same thing, consistency, talking with your, your customers, but putting up posts every day uh, on Instagram. It doesn't have to be a full blown video, but on YouTube, um, it doesn't have to be um, a big feature, a anything. I mean, check out the local, Influencers. I mean, Thomas. I know you're doing uh, more, more kind of woodworking and, and selling on Etsy and that sort of thing. Look at what Facebook. others are doing, especially the successful YouTubers. See what they're kind of building. Uh, it's it should be an addition to the business, not not something that goes against it. Meaning, like if you're getting orders and you're selling, that should be obviously number one. But if yes. you have have extra time to actually put video content on out there. Uh, you should, and the whole point is, uh, it's not that difficult. So I, I, I would interject too, and just say that uh, one thing that's been interesting too is that you know even in the time that we've had our YouTube channel, like five, six, seven years, um, uh, what sort of makes a, a, a channel quote unquote successful on YouTube or the things that the algorithm are looking for has changed two or three times very drastically. So don't necessarily worry too much about trying to hit exactly whatever it is that you think guarantees. You know YouTube success. Uh, I think to Lev's point, look at what some of the big, you know, the people that the channels that you admire, because we certainly have them, uh, are doing, and just try and create a video that you feel is is captivating and clear and encompasses what you do, and that's by and large going to be leverageable across all the different platforms. You know, you can use a, a good Instagram video on YouTube if you want to, or vice versa, or Twitter, or Facebook, whatever it is, um, as long as you can make a good quality video that you feel encapsulates what you want to tell people about your business. Um, you know, don't necessarily worry about having to make it specifically for YouTube or specifically this for Facebook or whatever it is. Um. Mm -hmm. No, exactly. Uh, I'm actually, sorry, I'm just trying to search. Uh, we have a good question here about the music. So yes, right. uh, for a long time, uh, we haven't used, we've used, there's a lot of free music out there that you can get. I know YouTube offers a lot of free music mm -hmm. um, or royalty free music. Um, you can get royalty free music Pretty much everywhere but if you want to actually go a little deeper um it's called epidemic sound so i'm just going to bring this up mm -hmm. uh, there are stock music libraries out there that you can buy too uh things like that that you know are just literally giant libraries of of uh music that you can use royalty free in in any video production that you want to use um yeah so the the cool thing about uh epidemic sound is that uh they it's a monthly subscription you don't actually pay per song yes. it's specifically targeted towards uh people on youtube people that have social media accounts up to a certain up to a certain stage um i think it's up to a hundred thousand views or something like something big you might want to check it out up to a hundred thousand view or a hundred thousand views on your YouTube channel or subscribers. There's like a threshold, but it's a big threshold. It's this amount. It's like 15 bucks a, a month. Yeah. And then, you know, if you're doing, like I said, if you plan to do a goal of one video per week, it's not that expensive. $50, a, like it's $2 a track basically. And there's tons and tons and tons of tracks on there. Really good tracks. 32,000 it says. Yeah. Yeah. 30, tracks and 60,000 sound effects is, you know, um, Atlantic laser works. So, uh, I think maybe this is a, a question we can come back to a little bit later, but, um, you know, first and foremost, I think, you know, I would defer certainly to Lev about this, but I think my, my response to it just off the top of my head would be, it's about, uh, ROI. It's, it's, you know, hopefully from what we show you today, 
uh, you're convinced that it's something that is feasible within your skill set. It doesn't take necessarily like a marketing background to be able to create a great video about a great business. Um, but I think at the end of the day, if you start seeing a lot of return on your videos or you start feeling like your customers are really interacting with your videos, you start to see that momentum, uh, then that's something that you can sort of weigh against, you know, hey, if I'm devoting X amount of, you know, hours a week to making videos, uh, how much is that costing me in sort of opportunity time? Um, and, you know, how much could I pay someone to, to put this together for me potentially? Yeah, that's, that's a great point. I think I agree. Like if you get to the point where you don't have time, like the, the you can see the channel starts to pick up or, or the videos are starting to pick up, there's some kind of a return, then I would say yes. But from the beginning, I would say no, because no. Yeah. that's a big expense. I mean, if, especially if you're a small business, I mean, hiring somebody just to do videos it would need unless you're hiring somebody my my thing would be if you're hiring somebody to do marketing then yes get somebody who knows how to do videos because yes. again everything goes from all the marketing goes from the videos right i i would say at this point it's even it's probably more important for a small business to do than a website because a website like again if you're doing local service like if you're doing um you know sign shop in my area for example on google i mean google maps that's where it's going to go like a google map account is free and it takes you know half an hour to set up yeah you don't need to build a website compete with competing websites especially you know if you have money to spend you're, you're putting it in, into ppc into into google adwords mm -hmm. so if you're hiring a marketing person get the marketing to do the videos to promote the content on social media and youtube basically. And remember, YouTube is not social media. I mean, it, it's somewhere in the in the between sphere, but it's a search engine. I mean, one in three people search on YouTube versus Google. So look at YouTube like a, a search engine. Every video that you post on YouTube, it's not like Instagram where it kind of just goes up after a day and nobody ever sees it. And I'll show you guys about optimizing your, your YouTube videos. Every video you put on YouTube is basically its own web page. Right, it has its own tags. It has its own link. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be found on Google. Right, I mean, like, let me just show you here. Google typically returns video results above text results. Now, I'm pretty sure if you're looking for, um, you know, yeah, exactly. So let's say if I want to laser engraved coasters, let's say I want to buy laser engraved coasters, I can go on Etsy on Google Shop. But you mm -hmm. can see there, right here, there's videos already. This this is the search engine. This is SERP search engine results page. Basically, this whole thing is uh, search results. Like nobody goes to the second page. I mean, I think it's like 0.2 percent of people go to the second page. They they just change their their search terms if they don't find what they're looking for. So you can see right there. This is one of our more successful videos on coasters. And this is again each each search is going to be different based on your location. So for example, if you're in in Botswana, like on is the the results will look very much different from this mm -hmm. um, actually Javon had a good question I'm just gonna bring that up here uh, would you recommend just having a YouTube channel or if you have a company website would it help to have separate video gallery page again this is this is where the videos come in so once you make the video you can post it everywhere you can post it on your website you can post it on your YouTube channel um, and again I, I see a lot of these videos people just take the engraving just show like uh, the engraving of a Tumblr and then they post it. You want to create trust with your community and your customers. So my, I know it's not everyone's comfortable being in front of a camera, but you know, if you're not comfortable, maybe some, one of your employees is comfortable, or if you're getting, like I said, a marketing person, you know, people want to see human beings. Like they want to see, depending on the video, like again, people might argue like the, the epoxy resin where they do that cool, epoxy resin stuff you never see people talking about it but it's just those videos generate tons of views so in my opinion if you're promoting a specific business and product um it's always good to be in front of the camera and talk to your customers directly i totally agree i think um look none of us were super excited about being on camera when <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a lot of love, love made you yeah, Lev, Lev made us basically, but it's, it's, the thing is, it's for the better. Like if you have enough uh, confidence in your business and in your product to stand in front of a customer face to face and say, I believe in this, I think you should purchase it because I know like I made it and it's, it's good. A video to my mind is really no different. 
Um, you have the opportunity to stand face to face with a lot of customers at once, but realistically, all you're doing is saying the exact same thing, just in a far more uh, effective way, or at least, you know, in terms of the, the number of customers that you can address. But realistically, um, the difference between standing in front of a camera and saying, I really believe in this, you should check it out and standing in front of somebody face to face and saying that is just, uh, you know, the, the amount of people that it can reach simultaneously. Um, yeah, and you guys got to remember, I mean, I know in North America, people like to buy local. Like they like to buy from, a, they, they would pay more to buy from a local artisan, a local laser engraver than buy something from overseas somewhere. You know what I mean? Uh, I Like, especially if it's a gift or like if it's an engraved cutting board, they're not gonna buy it from Alibaba or AliExpress, you know? Like they might, if you're looking for the cheapest option, but a lot of the times for engravers, you know, especially if we're doing gifts or more higher end products, especially if you have a Trotec, I mean, it's a it's a production machine. It's a production laser. It's made to to produce large quantities in good quality. Um, they're going to want the local stuff. Like they're yeah. going to want to be able to actually talk to the person that made uh, the product. And uh, without wanting to sit too long on this, too, uh, this is where I would just bring it back to. Without wanting to make it sound too uh, too complicated, but I mean, you know your customers really well. Again, just bear in mind this idea of clarity, also though that um, you wanna be sure that, uh, you know, just because you're really, really excited about something, uh, I know there have been times where, you know, I've brought Lev rough shoots of, of videos that are, I mean, Lev has had to sift through hours of footage and he'll trim it down to, yeah, <laughs> sorry, James. Um, he'll trim it down to something that is, you know, five minutes. And, and realistically, it's not, a, it's not a question of the other content not being good. If anything, uh, usually the trouble that Lev has is trying to choose what's the best <laughs> stuff. But it's a question of just, um, you know, trying to pick what is the most vital message that you want to get across. And then, you know, what Lev's talking about with doing it, you know, with a, a person facing the camera and trying to convey that to somebody is just, that's more about the means that you're going to convey it, right? Uh, you know, it's, exactly. it's about, you know, how are you getting across that message? Yeah, exactly. And I, I'm showing you guys, uh, James in the van. I mean, everybody knows this guy. And that, that, that's what we're doing at, at Trotec Laser Canada. We're trying to put as many faces in front of the camera. So, you know, James, you know, Mike, you know, Don, you know, Miguel, you know, me, um, you know, like it's not just lasers and the products. It's the people behind the lasers and we're the manufacturer. I mean, we're not selling directly to the end users like you guys. So for you guys, it's even more incentive to be in front of the camera and saying, this is what I'm making. <laughs> with, with me, James, is a, James is a sales guy, so he's busy and uh, he definitely wants to make more of these videos. Um, I, mean, I think now with COVID, it's more different. The state of the world means he's not doing a lot of driving, if we're honest, but we could tell him to just go sit in the van in his driveway. <laughs> <laughs> just, drive around, just drive around the block, basically. Exactly. But, that's that's my point. I mean, look, that video I just posted. I mean, that video alone has thirty, almost thirty four, thirty four thousand uh, views in a span of about two years. So, um, and this is a guy driving in a van talking about lasers. I mean, just to give you an example, this video has more views than application videos that we've done three, four years ago that are just application. And then we'll go into the, the content or why, you know, this video is more popular than the other video. But just to give you guys an example. So I'll do a very quick kind of tutorial um, in terms of the, the the design software. So there's all sorts I, of... I, go, go ahead, I, I don't want to promise here. Well, I was just going to say, I don't want to overpromise here. But if you guys see this, and this is something that you feel like you would be really excited to learn more about maybe you know like let us know and maybe we'll consider trying to do like a, an hour-long webinar on video editing at some point um yeah. i think uh you know just for a just for a minute Lev, i think it's just going to give you a really quick run through uh, to give you an idea of how quick and easy this can be yeah well, one last thing also about uh, james in, in the van i mean he james told us many times he, he goes into for new customers they've already seen a bunch of his videos and they're like oh my god you're the guy in the van yeah. you know so they already know him before he even comes and talks to them so imagine the power that you guys as laser laser businesses would do if you're in front of the camera people want to buy your products they see the person that they're actually buying the, the engraving service from i mean it's definitely it's a big it's almost like talking to you know 34,000 people all at once or mm -hmm. over a period of 
of two years instead of individually having to call and be in front of them. So that's, a, that's what I'm saying, right? There's no difference between, as you believe in your product, there's no difference between standing in front of somebody face to face and doing it on a, on a video, aside from the fact of, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're disseminating it differently kind of thing, right? Yeah. Okay, so um, right now I'm just, so this is Sony Vegas. Most of these video editing software, they're pretty much the same. You kind of have these, um, and again, before, before I delve into this, there's tons and tons and tons of content on YouTube about Sony Vegas. Type in Sony Vegas for beginners, we're using Adobe Premiere, Adobe Premiere for beginners or, or how to, whatever. How to make YouTube videos, how to make YouTube content. Uh, exactly, there's so much content in, out on YouTube yep. about YouTube. Uh, it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. So, um, what we usually do is we have a, again, this is what we do. So you guys can disagree. You guys can do your own thing, obviously. Um, so you have the video bars and the audio bars. So this is where the, the little hills are. Um, we do a quick, you know, title. It could be your logo. Don't make it too long. People, you know, they spend, I don't know, 20 seconds putting different titles in there. It's, that's not in my mind. That's not what people want to see. They just want to see, you look at the thumbnail, you want to see the product that you're actually, I mean, it starts to go long yeah. into the video. It's, it's too take, much. Take production, a, a lev production. And yeah. <laughs> exactly. A lot of the times we actually use these videos as a teaser before we put Miguel, before we put the actual talking. So, because if you're scrolling on your, on your Facebook, it, it takes a, a few seconds to kind of catch a person's attention before he flips to the, the next videos. So, which is why we always put these kind of still shots, these cool still shots of the, um, uh, of the products that we're making. So uh, I'll show you when we do videos, uh, I kind of put them in four different categories. Uh, well, English and French, obviously, because English in French for Canada, for French Canada, uh, photos and rough. And this is obviously the mu music that we're using. So for English, these are basically uh, the intro and the outro and the voiceover. So the voiceover is we, we put a quick script. Uh, we don't, before we didn't even do scripts, but we found that it's actually, it's a much better process to actually have something to, to read as a voiceover. Uh, if you want to do a voiceover. Um, you, obviously you don't have to, but for us, it's a lot of explanation videos or we're talking about the products or we're talking about the consumables that we sell. So we do a voiceover. Mm -hmm. um, for the photos, obviously we take a whole bunch of photographs. There's never, um, there's never not enough photos, basically. Uh, you can actually buy a light kit from Amazon, a really nice one for 150 bucks uh, Canadian. Um, it's gonna elevate your photographs. Like lighting is probably one of the, the most important things for photographs. Oh, thank you, Don. You can see it right there. That thing is 150 bucks and it's great. It's definitely worth it. So you can see like the difference in photos, uh, the, the lighting makes. 100%. Um, the photos, obviously we scale it down for web or for smaller images. The cool thing about photos, is that you can do these, um, I'm just gonna turn off the sound here. You can do these slideshows. So you don't even have to put a lot of videos in your videos. You can put photographs as a slideshow and really show the details of the products. So in terms of how I use them, so let's say I'm just putting, so this is my uh, rough footage. So let's say I want one of these videos of the cut. Oops, rough, sorry. Rough footage. You're just talking about the footage. Yeah, just, just rough footage right here. Yeah. Like let's say Miguel putting the material in the laser. The material in the thank you. <laughs> it's hard to talk. Now I see why, why it's hard for Miguel talking and doing it at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to. For today, Lev. <laughs> <laughs> so all I'm going to do is drag. Literally, just drag it across. I mean, it's that easy. And there's different things. That basically, the sound and the video are grouped together. So I'm going to press U to ungroup. And then the sound travels separately. And I'm going to delete the sound because I don't need just machinery uh, on the sound, basically. 
Um, one thing with Sony Vegas that's easier than Premiere, or again, in my experience, is that there's a lot of little stuff that are just easier to do instead of going to each menu and doing them. For example, if I just want to crossfade uh, one video into another, uh, or let's say I'm going to get rid of this here, I want to crossfade this video into this video. I just crossfade, I just drag it in, and then we have a nice transition between the videos. So um, in terms of setting all this up, like from beginning to end, I don't wanna go too deep into this. I, again, I, I would suggest uh, to look at YouTube videos like Sony Vegas for beginners. It'll talk all about the setup, but it's not that difficult. It, it, you know, If you spend about an hour into it, you'll, you'll kind of figure out the best way to set it up. Um, so just a couple of things. Once, like, I, this is kind of my meter in terms of where the video is going. So obviously anything that's on top is what's visible. Anything that's on the bottom is not visible. So it's kind of overlaying. I hope I can, I'm explaining this properly. Yeah. Um, so let's say I want the video to start somewhere. Yeah, you can see it's shaking. So as we're trying to do a really close up shot, so I'm zooming out with, I'm just zooming out with my mouse wheel. So let's say I want to start from here, like that little footage. Uh, I press space to start and, and pause the video. And then if I press the letter S, it actually splits the video in half. So I can delete this, just press the delete button. And then just taking this, I can cut the video up like closer and further away. Let me, let me use a better video, maybe this one that we're using already. So this one right here. So I can actually, if I just hover over the, the top corner, I can fade the video in so it goes whoop like that instead of. Yeah, maybe make of, it just a little bit longer just so that you can really. Yeah. I yeah. can make it really longer. There we go. It fades. So it fades and cross. I mean, I'm just going through the basics here of fade and crossfade. So now it's going to crossfade into this footage. That's it. So we're literally taking, you know, a couple of videos each, like this, this cutting board. Uh, and I've sped this up. So there's different ways to speed it up in Sony Vegas. All I'm going to do is I'm going to click the control button and hover over here, time stretch, and then I can slow it down or speed it up, depending. It's like an accordion. So if I stretch it out, it's going to be slow. So now you can see it's slower. I press Control Z for undo, and then you can see it faster. There's also, if you right click and go to insert, remove envelope velocity, you can make it like 12 times faster mm -hmm. by moving this little bar up front. Or you, can, actually, make it, uh, you can make it zero if you want to do a freeze frame as well. Yes, exactly. Um, just, so just really quickly too, Lev, uh, I think you do do this. I'm not sure if you call it the Ken Burns effect, but um, so the, the mention here from Javon is about the, uh, if you're doing a slideshow by adding a little bit of camera movement over top of a still image, it gives like a zoom or a pan or that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, and I'll show you guys how I do those. So, um, or, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm just gonna go into, so these are just photographs. So again, I just wanna show you how I did them. So I'm gonna go back to my photographs. And let's say I want this photograph. I'm just dragging and dropping. And there we go, we have this photograph here. So right now you can see that it's not the full kind of movie width that I want it to be. There's different things that I wanna do. So this button right here, that's called the event uh, pan crop. So we're really panning, I click this button, I have this kind of window here. And again, this looks all complicated, but it, I'm only using very few Things. I'm not going into all these little icons and, and, and twerks. Yep. So all I'm going to do is you can see my live screen here. I'm just going to drag it out and you can see the picture change basically based on how I want to change it. So this is a free change, but if I hit, we're going to hit control Z to undo. If I hit the control button, it's going to, the ratio is going to remain the same if I move in. So if I move it here, it's actually going to go across the entire width of my screen here. Okay. So this, so let's say, and this is basically the camera. So in this slide, 
So let me just go back here. So this entire slide here, this is basically my entire slide here. So this, you know, couple of seconds, basically. So this is my starting point. You can see this is where my starting point is. I want to put it here. And I want to end the camera here. Okay, so now when I click play, it's going to go across my photograph. So if you're doing a slideshow, I mean, if you're seeing how we're slowly zooming in, all we're doing, so I'm just going to click Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, until this becomes white. So now it doesn't have any, we're back to square one. So the way we do with this is you can see if I click on this piece, it's zoomed in, but if I click on this piece, you can see the window shrink a bit. And I cl click Control and shrink it. So again, I'm gonna recreate it here. So this is my start starting position, and this is my final position. And then I'm gonna hit Control and just bring it in a bit. And that's it. That's how easy it is. Again, these, these black um, marks here, sorry, I'm just gonna bring that back. So you can see if I change my aspect ratio, do this, now it's gonna hit. So now it's full screen. And then my end position, hit control, bring it in. And now I have this kind of zoom in. This mm -hmm. is a nice shot. I mean, again, you could do tons and tons of products that you're, you're going into. Um, a lot of these things here, like uh, Miguel Machado, like that stuff of the text, um, again, there's a whole separate thing we can go in with text, but it's pretty simple to do. Uh, you're actually going into media generators. Um, you're going into, I'm trying to find it. So you're going into legacy text and you can choose which text you want. I usually click this sh soft shadow. I drag it here and I get this little window up here, here. So I'm going to click on my timeline so I can actually see it here, sample text. And I'm going to change to product one. And again, with this, like you guys have to just play around with it and then you'll see I can make it smaller. I can actually place it anywhere I want along the video. I can change the color of the text so I can make it any color I want. And I can always, there's a couple more effects. Again, with Premiere, I'm sure there's tons and tons of extra stuff that you can do with text. Yeah. But with Sony Vegas, it's just, you know, a few clicks of a button, which is what I like. Also, with the panning, you can also actually change the camera angle to rotate. <laughs> so I don't know if you'll ever need it, but you can actually rotate the image. So we talked about crossfading. We talked about splitting. Uh, we talked about you know making the video faster or slower. We talked about text. Uh, these kind of things here, like this box, uh, that would be a solid color. So I would, again, Bring the solid color here. So right now it's going across my entire screen. I would click on the pan and then I would make it smaller and then I would actually put it to the side or whichever side I want to put it to. You just need to kind of play around with it a little to put it where you want to put it. And well, I can, I can put it. I take all day kind of showing you guys how to do this, but basically that would be it at the, the bottom. And then I would put my text here, for example, if you're trying to do it. You can always make it black. And one cool thing also with Sony Vegas is there's like a, an invisible white line here. If I click, I can fade the actual overlay on top. So for example, if I have one image over another. <laughs> sorry, there's just been so many sorry, good. Sorry, Miguel. All freeze frames. <laughs> so you can cross frames. I mean, you could do, there's all sorts of ton cool stuff you could do, but like, I just want to go through the very basics. Uh, we put the music, uh, one quick thing about the music. So you can mute it here. Um, you can't hear the music through, through the stream, but, uh, 
same thing with the music. So I'm gonna go to my the song that I have, drag and drop it. And if you click, you usually won't see if you click the letter V, it's this is how Sony Vegas is gonna start with. But if I you if you click V, you'll see the volume. Yeah, pre press V on your keyboard, he means. Yes, sorry, press V on your keyboard. Yeah. So uh, the music we obviously we try to bring the the talking obviously louder. You don't want it to hit the red part here, so we want to make it a little quieter. And the music, again, if you're if you have earphones, take the earphones off after you're done and listen to the whole thing without earphones, because I find that it amplifies the sound, so it doesn't give you a, an actual uh, of how the sound. It sounds louder with your earphones than than without your earphones. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, and again, for here, like when we're just doing shots, I'm bringing the music louder a little bit. And you can double click and create these points of where you want to create or or drop your music. Yeah. I think like that's that's the very basics. I think that's what we want to to show you guys uh, in terms of the basics of how video editing works. We put the the intro, the outro. We put the the footage, uh, the pictures in. We put the music, and that's it. So this might seem like a long time, and it will take a long time the first time you do it. But um, I, I think after a couple of tries, it gets a lot easier. It and oh, well, ahead, sorry. well uh, sorry, forgive me. I, I was just gonna say it all depends too on how many effects and things you want to put in. If you don't want to use photos, like don't use photos. It's fine. If you want to just do you know one or two takes and then choose your favorite one. Like that's fine as well. It, it you know this is just, as we say sort of like an extra uh, special sauce you can add on top that uh, you know is, is there for you when you have more time. But a, a simple, straightforward video uh, is not better or worse than one that has a little bit more production value. Uh, it's more about the you know the message that you're sharing. Um, exactly. Uh, I'll get to some of the questions um, after. I, I know we're a little time. Yeah. yeah I, I think we're going to go maybe about 10 minutes over. Um, just so I, I just want to talk about the actual marketing of the video. So the number one thing that, like, this is kind of in order of importance in my mind, uh, believe it or not, is a good thumbnail. I mean, if you're trying to promote it on, on YouTube or social media, you want a good thumbnail. Um, and what is a thumbnail? <laughs> Those who are asking. Thumbnail is just a picture of the video. So, so if you look at, you go, go ahead, sorry. Well, I was just gonna say, yeah, because uh, when Lev pulled up those those uh, video, uh, the search results, pardon me, for, for laser engraved coasters earlier on Google, uh, and you saw that little image, uh, like you see my face there and Miguel's face there, like that little image is the thumbnail. Um, yeah. If that, again, not to harp on about it, but again, if that has clarity in it and is something that looks interesting and you wanna click on, uh, you know, that is why somebody's gonna engage with that video on Google. Uh, I thought, you know, Chat made a very good point earlier about you know the YouTube uh, competition that's out there now, and that's a very very you know relevant good point. Um, a good thumbnail goes a long 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 way to helping your video succeed, as opposed to you know uh, just about anything else. As Lev said, like number one on the on the list of importance, and it it deserves that spot. What you want to be doing is one good thumbnail, or if you can get one video to go semi-viral, or you know like exponentially in views, um, that can make, your, can make your channel, basically. And this is the video that kind of made our channel. And I guarantee you it's because of the thumbnail, because there's nothing too crazy or special about This was like in the beginning times of Trotech Canada YouTube page. And uh, the editing, you can see Mike has more hair on here. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, this wasn't a, any good video by, by any means or any stretch. But you can see the accounts here. It's almost half a million views in four years. So after we posted this, and I could see the numbers kind of go higher and higher, and I can actually show you guys uh, the analytics behind it just to, to show you. Um, we started getting about, I don't know, three, four times more viewers. Let's see if I can get lifetime. Um, and try custom. There is a way to do it, I think. Yeah, somehow. Um, just to really quickly address, so Doug, when you have a face for radio, uh, you wouldn't want to use your face as the thumbnail. Uh, I'm going to level with you. Neither do we. Uh, but the <laughs> is that uh, again, and this is something you can research to your heart's content uh, personally. 
Um, and it begins to tie into, I think, what Atlantic Laser Works is talking about here too, about you know trying to portray a, a, a consistent branding or image across your video content, you know, to match your website, to match uh, you know all your different uh, streams. Um, you know, I, I'll, can I can I just interject? I'll disagree with that. I mean, there's no this is YouTube. There's no face for YouTube. I mean, this isn't you know. I don't care what you think of yourself. I'm sure you, you're you're good looking. Whoever made that comment, but my point is, um, nobody really cares about your how you look like i mean obviously you don't have to you don't have to dress up or dress down but they care about the products they care about the content about the actual what you're giving people they don't care about what you look like look exactly. at the once you've clicked that video you forget what the thumbnail even is it's just it's only... <laughs> <laughs> well my, my point is like think about yourselves i mean if you guys are watching youtube videos do do you honestly care i mean it's not a hollywood movie do you honestly remember or care what the person looks like I mean, it, you care about the content, so that's that's the 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 goal. I mean, you could see here around 2008, the, the views actually went down after a certain amount of time, but it was you know it was a good 500 a day uh, up until 2018. I think just because it was there for so long. But think about it: we posted one video uh, four years ago, and we had 500 people viewing it per day. I mean. It went, I can tell you, I, I can tell you exactly kind of how the YouTube channel grew. Um, once we put the first video of Mike and the guitar, I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's, it's an old, old video. It's one of the first ones. We had more people click on that video and our subscribers went from two to three per week to two per three per day, uh, just because of that thumbnail on our website. I mean, granted, it's a manufacturing website. There's more people on it. Than maybe a smaller business website but the point is as soon as we put the thumbnail people started clicking people started subscribing and then that next kind of jump was with this video was when we had this gorgeous you know 3d engraving of the canadian crest that's when everything kind of poured in um you can obviously help your videos out with advertising again if you have the extra money to spend on advertising but you don't need to a good thumbnail is probably the most important thing that you want to do in your videos. Um, don't suit up brand up, that's funny. Uh, optimize your videos. Okay, so optimizing, what does optimizing actually mean? It's just like SEO or search engine optimization. It's basically uh, putting specific texts um, or information in your video, just like a web page, to help Google and YouTube bring your product your video or your web page to the front yeah so a good seo for example if i look at coasters so etsy has the best seo obviously it's a massive website so they're number one for laser engraved coasters in toronto canada right now so toronto canada i type in laser engraved coasters i get etsy as number one number two i, I still get etsy <laughs> so that's that's uh, that's something i mean they have two uh, like of the highest ranking results we got epilogue laser obviously our great competitors epilogue so they're actually beating us <laughs> on on laser engraving coasters but you can see that we have one of the the, the keywords here yeah. and i know epilogue has been doing uh, laser engraved coasters for a long long time so that also uh, has an effect but basically that's kind of the the search engine results page, you know, the, the search engine optimization. It works the same way in YouTube. So if I go to YouTube and let's say I'm putting up a, a new, let's say here, this name sign, we got 4,000 views in six months. This one's not too bad, actually. You see, we have a good thumbnail. I'm just gonna click it here and I'm going to go to edit. So I'll actually show you guys how we optimize this. Let me bring this up. So the number one thing, and these things change all the time. Before YouTube had uh, keywords in there, I think they still do, but uh, they don't actually see it show more. And you can actually put tags in there. But from what I've read, and actually they, uh, they, they put it here, otherwise tags play a minimal role in helping viewers find your video. So they changed it. Uh, so tags are not as important as they used to be. Probably the most important thing is your title. And we always try to put two or three keywords into the title. So laser cut nursery sign, um, custom name sign. I mean, let's see if laser cut nursery sign actually pops up. I don't know if it does, laser cut. 
nursery sign. Again, this is Google. This is not on YouTube. Boom. It's on the on the on the first results. And I'm not Astro to Canada. I'm on my personal account here. You can see. So in in four months, we got number one results for for laser cut nursery sign. And I can guarantee you it'll be the same for YouTube. So if I type it on YouTube, it'll pop up as one of the first ones. Um, so this is very important, your, your, your title tag. The other thing is the content. Try to actually write out the story or what the video has. So if you're doing tumblers, you know, put in a little story about the tumblers. The more kind of content uh, you have, the better. Try to add keywords into your content, but don't stuff them because Google, they have algorithms to kind of go against spamming your uh, your description. This is what's called the description tag. See, so it's called your description. So this is your title tags, and this is your description tags, just like in a website. Uh, if if I'm going to put, let's say, nursery, uh, let's say this is a laser cut nursery sign. If I put laser cut nursery sign, we want to uh, check out our cool laser cut, laser cut nursery sign, laser cut. That's counterproductive. You want to speak like a human being in these uh, description tags and still try to put as much description tags as possible. Uh, this I copy and paste on every single video. So this is our social media links, our actual address, um, and obviously how to get in touch with, with Trota. Yeah. This is where you would put the thumbnail. This is where you would add to the playlist. Again, the playlist where we want it to go on our YouTube channel. So here it is under consumables. So otherwise, let's put it this way. If you have, like if those new YouTube accounts, you'll only have one row. So basically after six video, like you're not gonna see the, the other videos unless you find it by search. And Google actually shows you where people found your, um, your videos from. I think it's under engagement. I'm trying to, uh, traffic sources here. So 23% found it on the ch on our actual channel page, 22% found it through search. So people typed in laser cut name signs, they found our video, 22% of those people. Browse features external, so something like, uh, you know, from Google, for example. So you can actually check out all these stats as well. Uh, so going back to the tags, oops, sorry. Back to the tags. There's actually a video editor on YouTube. I haven't used it, but if you guys want to, it's it's a much kind of simpler version of video editing. So it's free. Uh, you can definitely check it out and try it um, as well. Uh, and you would want to know it's not made for kids because then it goes under a separate category and it's not as visible. And uh, eventually, once you start, um, once you start putting these videos out there, once you start getting the, the actual engagement, monetize your videos. Like, why not? Get, get extra dollars uh, from monetization from your videos and put it back into the videos themselves. So if you get up to the point where you're getting enough money from these videos to hire a marketing person or even pay half their salary, I mean, that's a huge help right there. Um, I mean, that's, that is also behind the 1,000 subscribers uh, wall that you were mentioning earlier for playlists is uh, monetization. Once you get over a thousand subscribers, you can turn monetization for your videos on. Uh, you can't just put up one video and, and turn on monetization. You have to kind of put some time into, YouTube wants to know that you're growing the channel and you're building, you know, something of sort of, uh, you know, something they can count on to, to be there for advertisers going forward kind of thing. Exactly, exactly. Um, I'm just gonna pull up my, um, okay, so we're almost, we're just about finished here. I just wanted to kind of go through uh, the last stages. So add, so share on social media, obviously. Um, what I'm seeing from, from social media, there's actually one guy um, who's out of Calgary uh, that I actually spoke to last week. Really nice guy. His name is Dusty. Uh, his Dusty Lumberco. Just wanted, he, he's not a Trotec customer. Uh, he is a woodworker. Yep. So this is the person that has over 200 uh, and 20,000 subscribers. So, uh, sorry, on uh, followers on Instagram, on YouTube, he has about um, 16,000. Yeah, yeah 16,000 with 57 videos. So you can see, this is what I mean when I say um, only one row instead of this full rows. So I'm not sure um, 
why it's so like that, but you he, can see his like thumbnails. Playlists kind of thing, is it? Yeah, he, he needs to split them up into the playlists. I mean, that's what I would recommend. But you can see the thumbnails. He has his own kind of branding. It's like these black letters on white uh, background, and he has full featured videos, again, three to five minutes each. But if you notice on his Instagram, he posts every single day, and he has tons of – he has obviously – a lot more followers on Instagram than YouTube. And you can take a full video, let's say a production video that we make, take the raw footage out of it and cut up the raw footage and repost it on Instagram. So you can technically post every single day uh, as you're making the video. You can do behind the scenes and have a maybe a cell phone camera just recording you while you're doing a project. So um, actually there's a great, uh, this is a Trota customer called the Cruel Hawk. Uh, he does, he's a, actually a fairly new laser user. He makes these awesome photographs. Uh, I think he's out of Hamilton, Ontario. And he actually does do these videos and sometimes we share it as well. Um, you know, he does it obviously with his phone, but he has behind the scenes on how he does these kind of signs that he works with the laser and woodwork. So it's not difficult. I think he's there by himself as far as I know. Um, and he makes these awesome projects, these beautiful photographs. I mean, gorgeous photographs. And I reshare it all the time on our Instagram. And of course, you know, post it. This is the kind of content. So if I want to buy an LED sign and I see you know, his Instagram, this is somebody who I would trust to buy from because obviously he, he shows himself, he shows, you know, his, his family, his work, like this is what he does. This is what he builds. Yep. And again, it doesn't necessarily have to be exactly this, but uh, you know, as long as you're communicating something that is true to, you know, however it is that you want to portray your brand, I think that is a big part of it. Um, I wanted to just really quickly bring up this point from, uh, from Tomas, if that's okay, love. Yeah. Uh, the idea of the conversion rate. So obviously like I, I wouldn't know the conversion rate off the top of my head, but one thing that you can consider, I think to Lev's point from earlier when you were talking about um, using, you know, like YouTube being a search engine and not necessarily putting all your time into anything more than a very bare bones website is, uh, you know, we often look at the analytics for what are the pages on our website that people are interacting with and what are the pages on our YouTube channel, for example, that people are interacting with? Like what are the videos that are that are climbing in numbers? And the number of people who interact with our videos compared to the number of people who interact with more than one or two pages on our website is just staggering, right? There's no comparison. Yeah, I mean, it, it, Thomas, it depends on what you're selling. Uh, I think if you're if you're a one-man business for now, if you're selling you know, specific products, I would argue, and what I've seen, Etsy and Amazon is more important than a personal website. I mean, and from what I've seen, this wasn't the case five, 10 years ago. Yeah. But now, if you obviously, if you have resources, have both. You want to have a website. But the amount of people that can find you on Etsy um, and Shopify and Amazon versus, you know, going against the grain with a personal website, I mean, I would argue have a YouTube channel that links to your Etsy and vice versa, have videos on your Etsy and your, and your Amazon account. So, or whatever you use, depending on what part of the world, whatever uh, third party websites are out there. Yeah. Um, share on online communities, obviously, and advertise on social media. So that's kind of the things that we talked about online communities. Again, if you're a woodworker, uh, there's a website called Sawmill Creek. Um, it talks a lot about lasers and woodworking. There's a huge community forum up there. Um, go out there, be, talk to members in your community, partner with other members of your community. For example, if you're doing a wedding cake toppers or, or stuff for the event, I know with COVID now it's it's low, but once the event industry goes goes bigger, talk to wedding planners, talk to caterers about uh, wedding cake toppers, florists um, that you can put uh, acrylic or some kind of a packaging. So sure. build a, a local community in your area, and that's that's how you grow. Uh, your business with with these videos and yeah i mean these are just basic goals but uh if your goal is to have uh, a good youtube following uh like I, I showed you guys dusty uh lumber co i think he grew within two years so it's not you don't need something i mean it's a, it's a long project it's a long-term goal but you want to be in business for a while don't put all your eggs in one basket don't put you know youtube is the the number one thing, but it's good to have to help your business in, in terms of market. That's, 
that's kind of the, the final message behind everything. Yes. <laughs> I think I talked too much. I think I talked too much. But uh, <laughs> the, the one thing I did want to come back to also, uh, so Atlantic Laser Works, I thought, had a great point, and I, I wanted to quickly... Uh, this one right here? Yes. So, um, so this is a really interesting question. I think, uh, you know, there's a, there's a whole sort of science and a whole, obviously like branding is a huge industry and this sort of thing. I, you know, we don't want to get way down a, a rabbit hole about this, but I think, um, again, this is one of those instances where, uh, it depends. I think to my mind, the, the simplest answer to this question is, uh, yes, you want to try and keep things consistent across all different channels. I mean, you've seen that we've changed our, our branding on our, our thumbnails and stuff, and it's always a bit of a work in progress, right? Like you're always changing things. You're always tweaking a little bit, learning what's going to work for you. Uh, but, you know, trying to keep, um, you know, a consistent, recognizable uh, style or recognizable sort of visual style across all of your different, you know, across your website, across your, your social medias, across your you know, videos, that sort of thing can only help you out. Uh, you know, people want to get familiar with your brand and who you are. And, and oftentimes they want to represent, you know, oh, I really like this brand. You guys should check them out too. And that sort of thing. So something that is easily sort of packageable towards, you know, what brands look like in 2021, it can never hurt you. To my yeah. Mind. I mean, it depends on the, the resources that you have um, in terms of people that are making logos for you. Yep. Um, obviously reaching out maybe to design students to, to give them maybe a part-time job or some kind of a, a, a co-op program that they can design logos for you. Uh, that would be a good idea as well, especially if you're starting out and you don't have much design experience. Um, so for example, this is some, some, this is one of our customers. They have a, a, a speedy uh, laser. They're out of Toronto. They make these, unbelievably gorgeous uh, cell phone covers and okay. they're quite expensive. They're not cheap. Um, and you can see the photographs. I mean, they don't even put videos on here, but the, the, the photographs themselves speak volumes. And, you know, this is not a major studio, a, a medium, large size company uh, to do this kind of stuff. So it, it doesn't take a lot of effort, but it takes effort. You know yes. what I mean? To, to, to do this. They've actually teamed up with uh, Jeff Mack uh, Designs and to do these incredible um, epoxy resin boards. And you've seen us share it on our Instagram. So they laser engrave these and basically put them out there. They don't actually show any of the laser a lot of the time. They actually just show the epoxy because they know that's what people want to see. They want to see that liquid pour over the uh you know the epoxy over the wood and they get tons and tons of views they have almost you know over eight hundred thousand views they're out of toronto yep. um they're a woodworking shop again you don't build it overnight it takes time but you put in the effort and you can get the results we speak from experience with our youtube channel i mean in terms of a, a manufacturer having over thirty thousand subscribers on youtube does speak to the fact that if you if you do it, you do it over time, you will have results. You know, you just have to be consistent with regularly too. Yes, consistency, consistency and clarity. I think two yep. really big things. And and finally, I would say to add to your uh, discussion about QA, um, look when I when I started here, uh, I felt like I was a, a very very bad photographer. I still don't think I'm a very good photographer. <laughs> But it's a part of what I do. Uh, as Lev mentioned earlier, and I just, again, like in tying some of these things up, I want to mention it again. The amount of great tutorials for things on YouTube that are obviously available completely free is unbelievable. Um, if that, you want to learn camera, how Yeah, sorry to interrupt, Don. That camera, by the way, the Sony, like, it's a great camera for photographs as well. Like, it's it works like, almost like a DSLR. Uh, it blurs the background. Like, we know this seems intimidating, so we're not going to recommend a bunch of lenses and cameras. Like for starters, you know, at that price point, it's not a cheap camera, but it will do what like 80% of what you need to be done. The other 20% is like the, the extra, the, 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 all yeah. the extra stuff that you don't really need as a beginner, uh, as a, as a private yeah. business. Use your cell phone to start with. I mean, yeah. just dip your toe in the water, do a couple of simple things. Again, your first few YouTube videos are going to be just about starting to build that traction, that sort of thing. So they don't need to be perfect right out of the gate. You don't need to be, you know, trying to make a, as Lev says, like a feature quality, you know, commercial or, or movie right out of the, the, the you know, the, the starting blocks. 
Um, if you can just create something that you feel, again, is just sort of clear and, and has that sort of personality, uh, you know, that you can be consistent and put out, like, that's the other thing. You can build a beautiful video and take a month to put it together, but if you can't put one out every week, uh, you know, you're going to find that your engagement with that video is going to slowly drop off, right? It's, it's more important maybe to be consistent than it is to be incredible. Yeah, I'm just showing Nicole Davis's uh, account. I don't know if Nicole is still with us. Uh, she's a trotic laser owner from Florida. Um, she has awesome, awesome Instagram. Uh, all the videos she does, I think, are with her phone. Mm -hmm. And she's it's just a life in as an engraver. I mean, she's talking about her projects. It's not all lasers and products. I mean, she has you know her family. She has this cool um she's building what is it like a container uh storefront location uh called uh all thing all, all good things gifts yes uh which she has a separate channel for oh this is a container right there so um oh there she is <laughs> thanks nicole uh but oh that, now she says good words after we promote her We're, we we didn't agree to promote her i swear this is just just me being honest i mean it's a great example of uh of you know a person who's using social media to to help their business basically and she's she's done a great job so i think i mean we're way over time here so i think we'll end it there uh i hope this was useful uh, my you know my advice is investigate research on youtube uh the type of uh, video software the type of equipment that you guys want that's what i did um so you know you guys can can do it yeah. And hopefully we'll see more videos from Trotech and other laser users across social media and um, tag us and we'll reshare for sure. <laughs> I think the answer to a lot of this stuff is always still like, it depends. So Lev is absolutely right. Like get out there, do a little bit of research, um, you know, rip off what we're doing. Uh, you know, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Just figure out something that's going to work for you specifically. And then just, uh, you know, get out there and, and be brave. Have fun. Awesome. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you have any more questions, leave them in the comments afterwards. We'll try to address them all as well. And thank you so much, Don, for being our co-host. <laughs> we'll see you guys uh, next week. We'll have uh, another laser review uh, Thanks, next week. Guys. Thanks, guys. Take care.